Okay. I will call this meeting to order. Um, we met Technical Advisory Committee. Welcome, everybody. And uh, Stephanie Marmillo is on vacation, and so I need for her today as, as chair. And we have a big agenda before us uh, with the expectation that hopefully we will get through the tip and be ready to recommend the closet committee really for public review. Is that right, Craig? Okay. Okay, starting with that, can you walk us through the public involvement? Sure. All AOS meetings are public meetings, and the public is given an opportunity to testify. If we have business items, we'll have a presentation by either staff or a consultant, and at that point, the committee will be given an opportunity to comment and discuss, and then the public will be given a chance to offer testimony, ask questions, etc. Thank you. Well, uh, approval of the agenda. Yeah, we have uh, a minute, several business items, and information. Any changes to the agenda proposed? Madam Chair, can I make one announcement and one addition to this? We, I sent around a note to the KAC and the Policy Committee announcing our new uh, air quality rep, Mark Stone King. And See, this is not Mark Stone King, <laughs> but Mark is out of town today, and so John Locks, who is the alternate from the Air Quality, another another new appointee to the committee, is uh, representing the Air Quality Committee today. Welcome. And actually, I really like to do that. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Wendell, here. Uh, roll call. President. <laughs> <laughs> here, Mr. Rebuffo. Here. Um, we have, um, <laughs> 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 we'll yeah, yeah, we, we have not Ken, we have not Ken. <laughs> representing Ken Morton from DOT today, sorry. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, Mr. Hanson. Here. Jeff Witt here, Mr. Wilbur. Here. And sitting in for Stone, Miss Stone King is Mr. Locks. Thank you. So we have a quorum. Yes. And uh, the addition I'm going to add to the agenda is uh, an informational item. Um, Jim Kenworthy is here and he has some information he wants to share about the uh, Crossing project. Okay, any group to With that addition? Yes. Second. Any opposed? Okay, let's get rocking here. Uh, Google the minutes. Thank you. We have, uh, it's for, it's made some good progress. We have uh, four sets of minutes. Um, and we did uh, check into, James and checked in some of the uh, Robert's Rules of War. Sorry. Yes, I, yes, I did. And um, found out that you do not have to have been present at the meeting in order to vote on accepting the minutes. And so um, with that, even if you weren't at the meeting, if you have reviewed it and it looks reasonable, you're welcome to vote. And so starting with the January 10th, 2013 minutes to move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, any opposed? So done. Uh, October 10th, 2013. Second. Moved by Mr. Buffo, second by Ms. Hile. Any objections? Okay, moving on to December 16th, 2013. We are approved. Second. Uh, motion by Hile, second by Rebuffo. Any opposed? And then that brings us to January 9th, 2014. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll move for that one. Second. Ah, Mr. London moved oh. and seconded by Ms. Files. I was going to hold the line on January 9th. For January 9th. <laughs> uh, any opposed? Okay. Moving right along. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, the first item of business is the AMS UCA boundary update. Okay, so remember last year sometime we had the update for our urbanized area boundary. We do this every decade based on the census. And the information we had at the time was when we look at the census area tracks, we smooth the boundaries based on you know, our thoughts on what's happening there. And we brought that before you and the policy committee for approval. And we did that process. And then it went down to FHWA and they said, wait a minute, you can only add parts of uh, areas, you cannot smooth things out. And to the two areas that we had smoothed out was a section of parkland in Eagle River 
and then a section of the Anchorage Coastal Wildlife Refuge, uh, which you can see at the, at the map there is the, the line that goes out and encompasses some blue area. So, uh, again, we were told that you can't smooth anything out. You can only add additional areas in. And so we are back before you today to uh, ask for a recommendation for approval for the policy committee to add in all those parts of the census box, whether they're in or whether they're mud uh, flats or water. So there you are. And I that uh, the reason that those may have been included as part of the census boundaries was because they're uh, heavily they used recreation. So at this point, is are there like someone out there? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any comments? Any comments from the committee? It's more of a formality. Uh, from the audience, are there any questions on uh, or comments about the urbanized, the modified AMS boundary? Okay, with, with that, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Lindemood, seconded by Ms. Heil. Anybody opposed? Thank you. I know that uh, we're making our headquarters people very happy. Did you get those? Okay. Yes. Okay. I should have pointed this out earlier, but given that the uh, tip is going to be quite a long discussion, do you think we should do the many uh, appointments next? I don't have a problem. Does anybody on the committee have a problem moving those up and getting them out of the way? And everybody's here for that. If there's no objection, let's go ahead and, and um, move to item C and D, and uh, and then item B would be at the bottom there. Mr. Lyon. So the first one would be the great advisory committee appointment, and this uh, you have a memo and a resume behind it, or I guess a. TV behind it, and this is to fill the slot of the uh, university uh, position on, on board the uh, Freight Advisory Committee. And uh, Dr. Philip Price will be replacing Dr. Jeff Miller, who has been on board for a while since we moved down to the uh, point here. So, uh, I don't have anything before you, and I'm going to recommend to the Policy Committee to that appointment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion here? Any discussion? Any comments? Any comments? Okay, we're going to go back to the committee. What's the vote? Who's okay, we'll to move him to the policy, recommend to the policy committee. Okay, motion by Ms. Heil and seconded by Mr. Pufo. Uh, any opposed? Okay, approved. The next one is for the Bicycle and Veteran Advisory Committee. So what we have here is we have two uh, new appointments and one new appointment. Our chair, uh, Julia Peterson, uh, moved away, and so she had one of the public seats. And we were fortunate in having uh, a member, someone who had been expressed interest before. And so uh, there was a Matt Johnson here who was the resume behind it, who was recommended for a new appointment for that public seat. And then because it was a new committee, we did some staggered uh, seats, and therefore two of those seats that we had uh, First termers, um, they've already expired in February, so we're asking for reappointment of those two members. So we've got one new one and two new one. Okay, any discussion from the committee? Yeah, the audience, anybody? Uh, yes, sir. Um, Mark Butler with the North Star Community Council, and just wanted to mention Matt Johnson is a standing here, one of the people. We're sitting here. Um, yeah, I'm a former president of North Star Community Council. I've been a very, very strong advocate for sidewalks and uh, you know, all those things that are part of this committee. So, uh, big endorsement of Matt's uh, presence on this. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, bringing it back to the committee. Any questions? If not, I'll end the motion. Recommend approval to, to the policy committee for. Okay, motion by Heil, second is by Lindemann. Any opposed? Okay, it's true. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for serving. Thank you. Okay, this brings us to the draft tip. Uh, Mr. Lyon, if you can. 
walk us through this uh, information that we have before us and what has happened since the last we met. <coughs> so you should have, I have three pieces of paper here. The different sheets here. The one is your typical normal dip that goes to see the past. Then you have a little uh, you have a sheet that says and then it's pulled out this one across the top. And then the large 11 by 17 fold out there with the yellow, etc. etc. So we we'll start with this one first, the larger 11 by 17. Um, this is the ranking and scoring that we did. This is just the roadway one because this has changed a little bit since the last time we looked at it. The other two, the transportation enhancements or alternatives, and the CMAX stay the same. So we'll be bringing that before you today because it's identical. So, what we did in this one is as we were uh, beginning <coughs> going through the process of starting to populate the actual tip tables, we looked at some of the projects and if you remember the TAC previously we had talked about how project X is well it may be a good project and it's it's a uh, great high we know that there are a lot of issues with it or we also know that it might get better sense to fund this uh, through state dollars as opposed to the federal dollars so we did that exercise and you can see here the call here it says better suited for non AMATS funding sources, and then we also had several projects which we thought uh, would benefit from going through a recon study first before we uh, before we started the actual project. And so, as you can see, the, the hard black line underneath Project 16 was where we had originally cut off, and we went down a little farther as we were populating the tables and we clicked off a few more boxes for ones that might make more sense in a different funding source and then uh, some other projects which made more sense to do recon studies. So there's a few changes in that one, the Whitney Road realignment. Uh, we talked about a recon study first with that. That was a project that was nominated by the Trade Advisory Committee. That was originally what we thought was we probably won't be able to get down that far with our funding. And as we were populating the tip, the staff was populating the tip. We realized we probably will be able to get down to that and do a recon study. Same thing with uh, the next three, Rattle Creek, uh, reconstruction, Burst Road, Jim Town, and Power Drive right now. So we were looking at the possibility of actually adding some funding into those farther down than we thought. So that's why we're in yellow now with the previous version of this thing. So that's kind of the differences on that one. Okay, that's the, while well, we have this before us, um, um, this is, as everybody recalls, is, is how we show the, based on the discussion that everything that is in the MTP is not necessarily appropriate for federal funding. And so in, in order to develop and guide staff in developing a fiscally constrained tip, um, we went through and, and identified reasons why these may not be some of these projects that even though they're important for the connectivity of the, the area that uh, may not be best suited for the TIP. And so are there comments about the way that this information is shown? Mr. Hanson? Can I read it? Mm -hmm. yes. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you could Madam Chair, before, before we get to that, can I make two points? <coughs> One is just let the record record. Oh, yes. Mr. Morris, Mr. Morris arrives. At 244, you're right. And uh, the other thing to keep in mind, which is exactly the, I think the point you were starting to make, was that the MTP looks at the 20 year plan that includes all sources of revenue, all sources of funding. So it includes state, possible state bonds, state capital grants, federal funding, bond funds, et cetera. So when we, when we rank and score projects, we take all the short term projects in the MTP and rank and score them. So even though we're ranking and scoring them, some of those, as you said, may, more, may make more sense to fund a different way. So even though we've ranked and scored them, and even though they may rank high, that MTP is including all sources of funding and not just federal funds. So that's why some of them may rank high, but they make more sense somewhere else. So we're not ignoring them. We're not saying we don't agree with that priority. It's just that the MTP includes all sources of funds. Thank you. Questions from the committee? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a point of clarification for me if it's okay. Uh, so there's eight projects above the line, if you will, we're running at Project 16, that are not going to compete for federal funds. 
Yeah, so, yeah, Correct. Yeah, that, 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 that we've determined it's best not to, not to expend federal dollars on those. That's the suggestion of staff given, right now. Yes. Given, the amount of, given the amount of projected you know, federal dollars, is, does the line stay at 16? Did you already account for the fact that we're not funding those, or is that line going to move down once those eight projects go somewhere else? We could have moved that line down to 22 now, I guess. Actually, I don't think potters in there, is it? I think it's not. Right now, it's not. It's just, you know, in the 30 days as we look at this thing and kick it around a little bit, who knows? But right now, we don't have that in the kit. So, so in, in, in actuality, then, that, that line, the heavy line of 16, that has moved down to account for the dollars that would have gone to those but can now go to other things. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's simple, I think worth a thousand words. Yeah, and I do notice here that there are a, a few projects um, that are highlighted in yellow and yet they also include access. And I think that reflects our discussion at, the, um, <coughs> at our work session that while we recognize the desire um, for the municipality to advance Bernard Road with um, Federal, convert to federal uh, federal highway partially process part, yeah. and partially fund with it, but it, it um, reverts it back into that other process that, that, that as a committee we saw that it, it, it still remains better suited for other non-federal funding sources. And so that's, I, does this accurately reflect what everybody had to remember? Mm -hmm. I apologize for being, I just want to make sure I understand. So, so the, you're, you're suggesting or proposing to typically the projects where the rank number 5, 6, 14, 20, 21, and maybe 22? Is that right? Yes. The highlighted yellow would be the ones that we were suggesting it made the most sense in the tip, and uh, and some of those uh, some of those have extras in them whether that they were suggested to be a recon study or um, something else. But the one exception there is the X that you see in the Spadarn Road rehab, where they kind of doing a possible possibly doing a combination of uh, you know, all sorts of funds. And well, my comment was going to be was on Whitney Road, <coughs> and that um, currently in the municipality's CIT, there is money requested from the legislature to fully fund in 2017 and 2019. I'm, I'm not sure that Whitney Road with some of the things is one that we would want to advance with federal process. Would you recommend the yellow line go away and that we put an X under better suited? Yes. Yes, I would. How do we handle that change since this isn't really an action item? Should we take a vote? Well, this is a draft right now, so you haven't so should we, do anything. are there it any it is. objections to make that, so we would, so it separates, we would not assign federal money to whether you go for a study or anything else? That's correct. I, I, I think it's a very important project that needs to be done, especially down by the railroad, uh, C Street to the end of the railroad property there. And all we're talking about is about 250000 bucks and, and would start with the federal process, and we already have the program. <laughs> without it in our CIP. With the understanding the our CIP will change from the current with that process. So would you prefer that it stays in the tip without showing funding and then put like a we can so do it stays, that way. So it stays in there because that's where it's ranked right now. <coughs> we, we can do it that way. Um, so I, I don't. Well, for consistency, though, we haven't included all the other items in here. No, it was just show up today. Oh, it wasn't yellow. Okay. <laughs> but I would like to make one of those things. It looks like our policies and procedures have looked like they really have one grandfather in the contract. And if I may put aside my the, the chair hat right now, the um, 
one of the reasons and, and the benefits of going down farther into the program is, is that our big projects that have been grandfathered for a number of years are soon within the next three years to get constructed and yet we need to start now on new projects so that we can do construction in 17 and 18. Sure. Yeah. Right. So it's a cyclic thing. So I've heard a suggestion to remove the yellow uh, from the number 19 and put an X in the first or in the column for better suited for non NHA non AMAC funds. Any other changes recommended for this table? Question. It's, uh, it's just um, on pro the project that's ranked uh, 13. Yeah. It's not highlighted in yellow. Is, it, is there a reason? <coughs> you... Yes. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this this is a uh, that's a municipal project that would be done in conjunction with the real <coughs> Um, work on, on uh, the Seward Highway uh, south of, uh, and, and uh, we have a program for other funds. So should that should there be an X for business program that's in that one? Oh, that would yeah. probably it could be. be. It could be, yes. Yeah. Didn't, have any, didn't have any strikes against yeah. it, and it wasn't high it, it, I think that would probably be. Thanks. Thank you for keeping us consistent. So the, the second suggestion is to put an X on Project number 13 for better suited for non-AMAX funds. Any other changes recommended? I just have one. Mr. Wilbur. I think if we are going to take Whitney out of this program, we should advance C Street Ocean Dock to 15. Okay. Uh, can we hold that until we can just get? Yep. Yes, we and, and, and then, the, which is almost right now. But yes. I, I, Any other changes to this? Can we? Um, recommend to staff that they make those changes and have it available to the policy committee, letting them understand our uh, process. Um, and actually, for the for the questions about our yellow, I don't know if these were available for the public. Our uh, questions. Uh, yeah, is that a yes? Do you have a question? No, I think it's available. Oh, okay. Um, just yeah. a comment. Um, I think the municipality needs to change the name of 92nd Avenue to Scooter Avenue. And so we should probably reflect that in the table. What's it called? Scooter, Scooter Avenue. Instead of 92nd Avenue. Instead of 92nd Avenue. Uh, and then it's on. I'm not aware of that, and our project is named 92nd Avenue and Academy Drive. Uh, yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me. Well, we found that out on, our, on the department's 92nd Avenue project, that when when it's constructed, it will be Scooter Avenue. So That was one of the PSNE review comments. Something that you write. Okay, so Again, walking through the changes so far, project number 13, it would be called 92nd Avenue, parentheses, Scooter Drive, is it Ann? Scooter Drive? I think it's Ann. Scooter Avenue, in parentheses, and then Academy Extension, and that we would include an X in the column for better suited for non AMS funding. We would move the solid line down to below item 22. We would make project number 19, um, remove the yellow so that it's clear, and then we would also put an X under better suited for non AMS funds. And I think that is all. Project I 3, we're going to take that X out of the better suited for non AMS. Did we discuss that? Uh, yeah, we, I think uh, this is reflecting the discussion that everybody agreed that it's going to be difficult even though we're still moving it forward. It, it, unless the, the committee disagrees. I, I think this was just trying to I think that was a discussion because of the federal funding and the that one too. And the fact that it's going to be difficult to deliver backing up with an environmental law. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's impossible. We deal with difficult all the time, right? Attitudes of being difficult things time, the impossible, difficult yeah. the impossible things. That's what we do. We also discussed moving the heavy black line down the 
between I guess 21 and 22. Yep, then move the black line. Okay. There we go. Any other changes? Any other comments from the audience on our color coded sheet? Yes, sir. Um, Mark Butler, North Star Community Council. Um, I'm very confused on the two Spinard Road projects. It's uh, clear that our assembly members uh, and everybody involved in the project, including property owners uh, sitting next to me and so forth, um, uh, do not want, wish to have the Benson to Minnesota portion. That's the number one on your list, as I read it here. Um, they don't want that rehab. They want the upper one fixed, which is uh, number three on yours. So where do the X's and non-X's? I'm not confused. Um, where does that leave us? No um, funding? If I may, sir, the I legislature think, shows up with some loot. I think uh, with this sheet, just for clarification, this is basically the yes or the no. A yellow means yes, program and into the tip. Uh, it's relative ranking, <coughs> year one through 22 is based on scoring. And um, the, uh, so even though it's recognized by this, te uh, technically that it's gonna be difficult and it may be better suited for non-federal funds, we're still moving forward with it. And so I, you'll see where, where um, and, and they will be driven by schedule in, and, and funding availability in the TIF. So we'll, we'll actually go through, walk through the TIF and we'll see what happens. How this gets, uh, becomes this, basically. How we went, from, but this is just to document the process that the technical committee went through to decide which projects to advance for federal funds. Does that answer your question? I think so. The tip part will be where the money's at. It, yeah. it, money, no project. Absolutely. Yeah. Other questions or comments from the audience? Okay. So this real quick, this sheet of paper reflects the, the policies and procedures which talk about the different allocations. In other words, the policy committee adopted these several years ago and it relates to when you're doing your tip, you need to put in your target in the roadways. The total would be somewhere between 55 and 65 percent. Phase replacement somewhere between 15 and 20. Uh, Non-motorized or transportation alternatives would be somewhere between 10 and 15, and the CMAC around 10 percent. So, okay. And um, since uh, this is a question and an issue we talked about, I think these percentages are are off. Because at 72. Right, the 72% in rows includes the pavement replacement. If you look, because the pavement replacement category is in our roadway table three, and that 14% is part of that 72%. So if you looked at the table by itself, you would see the projects that are in there that are outside of the pavement replacement is around 58%. Pavement replacement makes up 14%, so that 58 and 14 together makes your 72. And then you have the 12 and the numberized and the 16 and CMAC. And the tip itself shows those numbers there. This was this was the first time we'd ever done that sort of thing, and here it is. So I'll fix that in half and I break down there so it's less than a little better. Okay, so, what this, so then what this table shows though that um, okay, this is it is confusing because exactly the tip you're right, it does. Okay, acknowledging that we have said, so we'll, we'll have to come back to the percentages, but would yeah. you like to walk us through the tip sure. at this point? Any other questions? It's handy to hold on to the percentages from the, our community targets. Excuse me. Okay. May I ask a question? When you come up with the percentages, are you looking at just, for example, on the Spinard Road, does that count as just a road project, or does it recognize that it would include a number of non-motorized facilities as part of whatever gets done? That is just uh, considered a road project for the purposes of this. If we, the only things that included it, are included in that non-motorized table four are projects that are actually in that table. So if we're doing, if the plan is to uh, do Spinard Road and include a non-motorized facility there, that's considered to be part of the roadway project. It's not part of our what we say our allocation is for transportation alternatives. That ten to ten to fifteen percent. That's those are separate <coughs> ones that the policy committee has decided. Those are still piped there. They're all in there. And if you do a trail as part of a roadway project, it doesn't count towards your ten to fifteen percent. That's the policy committee's. Uh, that has been the direction of the discussion. So. 
And just the uh, purpose for the, the committee, um, in terms of what the allocation is to AMAC, there is surface transportation program and match, which is a combination of both state and local match, at $23.7 million a year. In addition to that, there's the $1.2 million uh, program for CMAC, which would it primarily funds the, prim the primary measures, the uh, SIP measures. Um, the CMAC allocate, the, this $1.2 million is not part of the 23.7 when we are divvying up the percentages. So basically for CMAC, you get the $1.2 million per year plus 10% of the top number. So that, it, I point this out only because it's been a source of confusion for myself um, as I've been working with these numbers. And then a four year total, just so that we can track, is, is about $94, $95 million for surface transportation program and 4.8 for congestion mitigation and air quality. You will note that there is no separate allocation at this time for transportation alternatives or what we have historically called trails for recreational access. There's been so many changes under MAP 21 that at this point the, the transportation alternatives allocation has not been addressed through headquarters it, uh, in terms of the way the um, funding is, is to be administered is, is uh, very different and requires a whole lot more uh, and plus the funding has been pretty substantially reduced. And so this is the, the total that we're, we're dealing with and you'll see that it is actually a few million dollars a year less than what we have traditionally dealt with. So. Is this is a reduction or the small reduction. Is that a result of the total federal share coming to the state of Alaska or is it a reflection of a reduced allocation to Anchorage from the total share? Well, actually, okay. it's the AMAS now is treated like any other um, MPO in the country. We lost our Alaska exemption where it used to be that the state of Alaska would, in working with the MPOs, would come up with a way to distribute them and allocate the funds. Now we receive a formula amount just like any other MPO. And so it's... So we don't have any discretion with the state as to an amount we could get, at least a minimum amount if we wanted. It doesn't preclude the state from providing more money, but it's a state decision based on an MPO state conversation. Whereas the current rules are basically the MPO will get this amount at least. And if we get more, we have to negotiate the state to get more of the cut. If we if, it means that is it a, is it a possibility or not that it will happen. But it's inside the rules. I am not familiar enough with okay. the rules to know whether I, I can tell you right now that the the possibility with the most slide you know, to the the committee and for the audience, um, the, there's been a shift and actually an overall reduction in STP funds. So we actually kind of double whammy now. We're part of the formula distribution, okay. and the STP has been compressed with a, an increased focus on the NHS. Okay. All right. So, um, in order for Anchorage to get more money, it would have to be. I don't see it ha how it, it can happen, given that we're not entertaining these projects on the state side. Other questions? Before we get into the meeting. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Vivian Underwood with Transportation Planning at the Municipality of Anchorage. I have a quick question about number five on the tip. On the, on the other handout, it shows that a recon study is required for this. But I'm not sure if that was exactly what the TAC intended because the recon study is not reflected on the project description there. And I'm wondering if that's a real reflection of and the project description as it is, is captured very well. Just looking at table three. Okay, table three, project five. And I'm sorry, the question is. Um, on, the other sheet, on this handout, it calls for a recon step. And there's no mention of a recon step in the description of the five, and I just wondered if. If it actually does require a recon study before you do this study. Are you talking about the Minnesota Drive Mobility and Safety Study? No, I think the description needs to be updated. She had submitted in her 
application. Right, Vivian? Yes, is that but, what you're... Well, this was based on the TSC's conversation as a work question. So I didn't recall that you wanted a recurrent study first before this project, and I just wanted you to clarify if, you, if that is what you intended. Okay, if I, if I may, if my recollection from the committee in response to Ms. Edward's question is that what we wanted to reflect in our evaluation is the fact that it's, it is a study, it is not the implementation of its recommendations. It's not resulting in itself in construction. Is that correct? Yeah. And so I think, um, is that everybody's committee, the committee members? Yeah. So, so just as we were evaluating, since we didn't know what the study would result in for its recommendations, we just wanted to make it clear. And so, um, So we go back to the yellow and white sheet for item number eight. Um, uh, would, the, would it be more accurate to eliminate that yellow? I mean, excuse me, eliminate the X under recon study first? Just recognizing that the project itself is a study. Okay, Anybody, everybody okay with that? One more change to the yellow and white sheet. Remove the X under the column for recon study necessary first for item number eight, Glen Highway Integrated Corridor Management, recognizing that it's a study. Okay. So we'll do that as well. Do you you get me? Sorry, can we call it Integrated Corridor Management Study? There you go. Right. Would that be okay? Yeah, it's a concept. Management Study. That would probably help. <laughs> 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 oh, no. the one. Speaker guns would be proud. They would be. Yeah, because yeah. the, the spelling so far is pretty good. One word I saw spelled wrong, but that's okay. Okay. I can't say it's spelled Back to you. All right, so uh, recognizing that this is a staff draft or asking be recommended to be released by the policy committee for a 30 day public review. Um, there will be, I'm sure, all sorts of things that need to be tweaked in here. And so I, I'm hoping that that's, that's part of what we'll get. What you just give it to me right now, if you can write notes on the one that you have and you can hand it to me, that would be helpful. Um, there are several tables in here that haven't really been touched at all. James and I have worked the most on table three, four, and five because those aren't the ones that's out of focus. So tables seven, eight, seven and eight pretty much have not really been touched. And that's the CMAC table with mostly FDA money and the, the wonderful mix that is table eight of other sources of funding and uh, earmarks and grants state point and all that sort of stuff. So we really haven't touched those yet, expecting that the, the, the bulk of the updating on that will be done during this 30 day public review. So keep that in mind. And obviously, they need a lot of information here on the table seven from the FTA funds from the railroad and from the, from the public transportation department. So, um, and probably a little tweaking on these different pages here as we go. We've changed a few things to reflect some stuff on the front cover, but basically the numbers in red in the middle are the dollar amounts that we are either over or under in a specific year. And the, at the end of the day, those should be at zero, showing that we are, uh, the suggested obligation is the, the exact allocation. Um, so we this for the purposes of the exercise. We're not quite there yet, but uh, we will get there, but it was just a quick version of throwing the projects in and, and we'll get to the exact zeros later. Um, so nothing too much more to add on this front page unless someone has questions on that or comments. Um, I do have myself a comment on it, and I think it's something we need to be mindful of as a committee, is that this, uh, I think this, uh, there's a, uh, this, 16% for CMAC is it's a little bit misleading because that 16% includes the 1.2. The 1.2. The yeah. So it's really closer to about 13%. Yeah. Um, but if we had 
um, our P&P shows a pretty solid 10%. And so if we're going to be exceeding it, uh, we have to be very willing to make a very strong case to the policy committee because I'm not sure how, how that's going to be proceed. But I think it's with the this community. That's a good point. And I think, as you also mentioned before, that there isn't there isn't a separate track, well, track doesn't exist anymore, and there isn't a separate TA allocation right now. So the language in the line where it talks about, uh, say it would be the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven column or line down, uh, we're talking about track and then in parentheses the STP program. So that should probably come out because we don't have track and we don't have a separate TA allocation. So we and if I may, is if we can make suggestions for changes and then adopt them at the end, maybe is that way to do it. For that, um, I, the, the, the use of the term transportation alternatives is one we've been requested by our headquarters office to not use unless we absolutely intend to focus on that funding source of which we do not have access to. So uh, my recommendation would be just, that if it's okay with the committee, to change uh, table four to non-motorized and get rid of transportation alternatives because it's, it has nuanced under MAT 21 and it's, it's creating issues for... It's a specific uh, funding stream right now, transportation alternatives, and we're not getting any right now, so I'm fine with going to the number of Any other questions on page or table one? Table two is HSIP funding, and again, that's the federal funding pot of money that the state decides the allocation of obligation and grant and restoring and all that sort of stuff. So it's just included in here right now. And that one is up to date, as far as I know. And this is added to the program. Yeah, this is not part of our financial aid concern yet, so it's all outside the payment allocation. Two way left turn. From days in traffic. TW. Yeah, it's not something you would see in a text message. Traffic department. It's a new text term. It might mean something. It doesn't just laugh out loud. It just means fix the problem. We can spell it out. T L O L. Sorry. Okay, I'm sure you know maybe Aaron. Okay, right. so table three, your roadway improvements. Right. So a couple projects up at the top that are constructing right now. And then one grandfather project at Abbott Road. And um, then if, I, if I may, would the committee be okay with eliminating down road by the end of this? It, it's going to be under construction for the next couple of years, but it's no longer a funding. So. Uh, no, never mind. It may need to run. Uh, never mind. Let's just leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> leave it. Okay. None of my is projects. Because of our um, policies and procedures for the TIP development, have the pavement replacement program fitted after the grandfathering project and before the land project? Maybe right. That's where it was before. Yeah. Um, so there's a suggestion there? No, I think that's. I think there's a policy. So program. what we would need to do is move what is showing as. Non this needs to go up above to up above one. Yeah, the low G above one, I believe. Okay. See, we don't want to forget about the even oh. It's that important. It's supposed to be above G or below. I'm not seeing it real quickly, but I, I, I do remember that. Yeah, it says the payment replacement program will be listed after the grandfathered projects in the roadway table and will not have a range of moment to store it. Yeah, you got good memory. It's Okay, and actually, instead of saying constructing for O'Malley Road, can we just call it a G? A what? It's, it's grandfathered. Um, constructions, physical constructions are going to be in the 16th. So 
we would have Dowling Road at the top constructing, and then O'Malley at the Everett Road as grandfathered, and then the pavement replacement, and then we start with this the Road we have those sort of events in this number one. Yeah. Okay. okay, and there's a question about the placement of Spinard Road. You would see that even though the the Minnesota Benson Park, for various re reasons, actually scored a little bit higher. It is it is um, farther out in the program for funding. It's showing um, a start in 2018 with the possible AC and to advancing into 2017. And in years past, when we had the projects in the TIP that weren't grandfathered, they were not in, in a ranked order. They were just in there. They happened to be in relative ranked order now, but in years past they just were in there. It was wasn't wasn't made to uh, be simply in ranked order. Right, once they become a grandfather project. What's that? I think it's once they become a grandfather project. Right. Okay, project number two is the Spinard Road project, and this shows the, the fact that it's so backing it into an <coughs> environmental document of your federal process is uh, funded in the first year with final design in the third year, and right of way would be beyond 2018. That's the schedule based on a federal project delivery. So, Jennifer, do you want to take comments as you go through? You just yeah, want to go through. I have to tell where you want to yeah. I mean, I think I think it's important to recognize um, that when you federal when you federalize, as it were, a, a project, I think I just want to make sure the comment from the folks in the community recognize that when you, even if you have a design done, when you change the color of the money and you add federal to it, this schedule that you see for Spinard Road Number Two from Hillcrest to Benson, we won't be constructing it with federal money until after 2020. Because we have to go through a design, we got to go through an environmental document, then we got to go through a design, then we have to go through right away, and then we have to go, you know, then it'll be further than that, no matter, even if it's only 15 or $12 million. So unless we can, unless the design's already been done under a federal design, then we can do that. But it just, it, it, it makes a big difference, and I think that's why the technical committee struggled in our work session to let the policy committee know that when we're presenting this, I mean, it's it's their call and we program it, but to recognize and show the reality of a delivery, unless Jerry's got some rabbit under his hat to pull it off quicker. I mean, I think it's it's okay to show it, but I think the tip on this particular project or any project, because this one's no different, um, it's not necessarily more complicated or more controversial or more friendly or less expensive. It's just, it's a mother may I process with federal money and it doesn't matter if it's $3 million or $30 million. It still takes the same amount of time. Yeah. The only comment I was going to make is I think the plan, the plan is after this, it would be more federal funds. It does make any difference in the schedule, though. We would be looking for uh, legislative grants. Yeah, so those out year monies would just come right off of yeah. that legislative funds. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. That's so, good. so wait a minute, you're, you're using federal monies to advance something you have planned to actually start with all state funds? For all local funds? Not all state, uh, local funds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if we have, uh, John Weddleton, if we had uh, good enough money from the legislature, can we say, oh, never mind, would the federal money be back on track? And what process, Mark Butler with North Star Community Council, uh, and what process is that? Do we have to wait till next year at this time to do that? And therefore, we're locked into the federal process between now and then? No, I think if I could, I was just asking Craig about the schedule of the TIP approval and the schedule of the legislature. We're going to know a lot about the state legislature's actions on any particular project, whether, and this is one of them. There's a host of projects in here that the municipality and possibly the state. I know Kenneth Garm is asking for some resources from the legislature. So the result of the legislative action of that capital program will be done. But we actually have to approve this before the policy committee when we want to reflect both of those. So, they dump $15 million on us for Spinard, and just clean that one right off and advance up. <coughs> um, uh, the Postal Legislature is currently scheduled for Easter, that's uh, April 20th, a Sunday, uh, and the AMAF Policy Committee is in two weeks. So would this be taken up at that time? We're just going to release it for a 30-day public review. So we're starting a 30-day clock in two weeks, and then public comments, and then amending or adjusting, and 
then back to the technical committee, and then to the policy committee. So it would be approximately what month when the actual decision is made by the policy committee? Our, our schedule shows a, uh, I believe, a July. We still have to go through planning, zoning commission, and the assembly. assembly. And so we have a lot of other steps before this gets approved, and it will certainly be even after the legislature adjourns. September policy committee is the absolute yeah. latest right. that Ms. they would have to federal monies to, yeah, to approve to this. this. Um, yeah. uh, because one option that's been discussed, the, the, the design is, is is generally on hold at this time, uh, and it hopes, we hope to get it going and get it very soon, of course. But it's pending funding and it's pending the status of what color the money is, you know, federal money, state money, city money, and so forth. So. Um, uh, one way is to split the project into a couple pieces. It's been identified by your design team. Um, and we could do one block with state money if we get a smaller than total amount this year, maybe money on the road on the road bond next year or something, and then have an increasingly smaller project um, left uh, to do with federal money. Because the federalization of the entire project with the design and construction of the whole thing on hold, if we don't get, is my understanding from the last meeting with uh, Mr. Smith, um, John Smith, that um, um, unless we get enough money to do one chunk that uh, uh, pm and &E decides to do, would decide to do first, you know, whichever what that would be. So our hope is to make the federal portion of this go away and be used on some other wonderful project instead. Um, I'm sure there's many candidates. Um, the other item is that um, the two projects listed here, one is the rehab, uh, the number one uh, project here on, on both of these is the rehab on the old uh, Dead Man's Curve, it's, it's referred to the middle portion between Benson or 30th actually and Minnesota. And um, that's just to uh, put in the most locals' uh, opinion, waste the money, make the existing one look pretty enough, uh, but it doesn't help solve the problem. It still has narrow sidewalks, no bike lanes as called for uh, unanimously in, by the bike plan uh, and so forth. So all that does is 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 mill it out the, the asphalt. Maybe it, it, there's not enough money there clearly to do uh, um, uh, is it AMA? What's the the term for ADA? ADA. ADA excuse me. Yes, <coughs> um, ADA improvements and so forth. So um, um, we don't understand why that would even be a tip project. Uh, actually, um, if we could, if you look at item number four, and this is why the yes. state the state you know, the funding is the way it is, is that there is a the recommendation for a strategic plan for that to identify and lay out the recommendations that the way that Spinard Road, this first project is in the, um, you see it includes that Spinard Road 36th Avenue cut flip, which is, it has a lot of, it would certainly change the, the, the neighborhood. It will also um, provide other opportunities. Yeah, it, the reason for the strategic plan is to look at that. The other thing um, that we believe it would do is, is greatly help the congestion on Minnesota Drive because of the split phasing of the signal at, at Spinard and, and uh, Minnesota. And so they, that's the reason, even though they're in, in an awkward order, we made the, pro, the program work to inform all of the decisions to be made. And as uh, Mr. Lang and Ms. Wilbur indicated, if indeed the, the, the city um, and the working and working with the legislature decides to not federalize the project, we would um, we would refine this and uh, and move that money elsewhere for this the, the so, so this is if I may this. then Mark Butler if this if this passes then is the project federalized or can can the project they say no thank you we get the money arrived we don't want it yeah. that's federalized federal federal so yeah and Mark, we're just putting it out for public review. So the comments that you're making about dividing it into the, the way the project is written is the way it was nominated. If we didn't we didn't mess around with the nomination and say we appreciate your nomination, but we don't know what you're talking about, you should divide it. We, the staff just scored it the way it was in there. So as the comments come in, you know, comment, wouldn't it make sense to split those things up and you know maybe the, the result of the design. So all we're trying to do is get the conversation started with the public, but in order for us to do that, we have to get it. We had to do this process, and we're a long ways away from the decision, so we've got a lot of opportunities. But you know, these are all keep these comments in mind. I mean, I know Craig's keeping notes here, so um, we're just trying to make sure that we've got something that's that makes technical sense that we can put out for review and start that public conversation. Um, we've got a long way from the decision, and the policy committee might not like what we have to offer, they may tell us to go back and regroup. So that's kind of where we are in the, in the overall.
Okay, working on down the list, if, if we will. Um, I think on the, the project number two there, Craig, for right away it would actually be 2019 plus. Nope. Any other questions for projects number three and four? Going back to the ones that have listed to the Lisbon Road Rehab, we have listed 2017 PE. Oh, that needs no, to be updated. It's, it's actually... There's no funding. Oh, it's AC. It's AC. Oh, it's AC. Oh, no okay. Yeah. Yeah. AC. Okay. Yeah, right. you can see in the red text part of the project description, one million okay. AC funding from right. 18 to 2017 is for design, and the rest of the, that 1.5 can okay. stay in there. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, the AC advanced construct is a innovative financing tool that we have to where if, if something is uncertain or is too large to fund in one year, we can fully fund it by borrowing for next year's program. Thanks, got in trouble. Okay. Basically, it's the state writes the check out of state funds and then gets paid back later from the federal funds. Okay, number four. Number five, we have the recommendation to add study after Glen Highway Integrated Corridor Management. Uh, to make it clear. Uh, any comments number, uh, on the rest of the page? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, eight, we take the 250 away. Oh. I, think, I think, Lance, you were suggesting blue. Seven from 2018 up to 2015, or um, number five, which would be the next priority project. <coughs> you know, advance number five up to 2015. The question is to staff: at, Is there capacity on staff in the TWP this year? You can WP to actually advance something that large. Well, I'd really rather wait till 2016. <laughs> we have five consultant contracts, we managing possibly six. This would be seven. I'm okay with leaving it now, and we can work it through the public process yeah. comments and see what kind of comments we get from the Trucking Association. And others. But we could, just to your point, though, Lance, move that 252 C Street, take it out of here, and move that somewhere else. Oh, how's that? Yep. Okay. And then number, um, we talked about taking out number eight, then, so we put three number. Rabbit Creek is a new one. Uh, this is what we're talking about having to start on um, projects now so that we can have something to deliver after O'Malley and Abbott. And same with Birch Road. Birch Road had um, a thin left overlay and yet it has um, pretty substantial subsurface issues and so it's uh, recommended as a 3R. I have a question. Um, Craig or Jennifer, the, the, the scope on Rabbit Creek is sewer to go into That language is right out of the end of so okay. Okay. There's no trail for mm -hmm. on pay or on either side. I thought they included a pathway. It says sidewalk here. Yeah. It says sidewalk and pathway. Oh, sidewalk and pathway. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Okay, what's over? The pavement replacement program is one that uh, has some flexibility and we can, uh, since we're just really getting it kicked off, but we do have. Uh, for uh, in 15, possibly at the end of 14, um, the first project, which is Eagle River Road, the first five to 15 miles, we're repaving at about 5.4 million. Um, and so there's some flexibility to advance the 16 funds to 15 to get that funded. So this is another place where there's flexibility in changing the dollar amounts. Okay, any other questions? Oh, and that pavement program is going to be going. Yeah. Okay, out to the audience. Are there any other questions on table three? Which is where the um, 55 to 60%, 65% goes to roads. Any questions? Okay, what? Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, Todd Logan, the only question I had, we just spoke briefly about project number 10, the Birch Road Rehab, and uh, at least briefly in the past, we discussed this group the idea of rehabbing roads and failing to rehab the adjacent lot use path. Do you have any idea whether this project rehab bird includes the rehab of the adjacent path, which is much, much easier? Right. Good point. We'll check the nomination, Craig, and then check the price. Because uh, I think the nomination did not. not it was just right next to the building. And yet, it, it, it is a, an awkward one because the state owns the road, the city owns the pathway. It's just 
but it, you're right, the bathroom doesn't need to. So, uh, staff, and, and plus, it's, um, yeah, look into that because I think we ought to. Um, and we're going to look at the price to rehab the bathroom mm -hmm. two miles or a mile. Right, because right now, you're right, it doesn't need to be so, um, as a committee, how do you want to do it? Do you want to go back and walk through the changes we made and adopt each table? Okay, I'll make a start at it. Um, we, shall we go ahead and ex um, accept table two as is? Uh, table one as it is, uh, it takes one and two, unless of course they are changed by any other changes we make. Them. Oh yes. Transportation alternatives. Okay, everybody okay with table one, unless the percentages change based on other changes. Uh, anybody, uh, uh, Move your table one as amended. Second. Okay, moved by Heil, Tide, Hanson, and Wilbur. Any, Hold it down. any objections? Right. Table two. Move your proof as is. Second. By Heil, seconded by Lindenwood, any objections? Unless you want to, unless you want to spell out what TWL, TL is. I, that is a very good point. Let's do that, staff. Let's uh, two-way left turn link. Okay, so uh, it's approved with spelling out the two-way left turn link. Okay. All approved? Now, page three, or table three. Those are approved, the amended two. And walk through those amendments? Yes, unless, yeah, I'll have a discussion. Second, page three. Okay, moved by Heil, second by Hansen, and going through the approvals, the changes. Do you want to make a stab at it, or do you want me to? You took the notes. <laughs> okay, starting at the top, the uh, change uh, O'Malley Road from a constructing to a G. Uh, move. The pavement replacement project from the towards the bottom of the second page up to between G and one. Uh, change number two is Bernard Road rehab. Uh, just a correction there. 2019 plus for right of way. Moving right on down to project number five, Glen Highway Integrated Corridor Management Study. Add the word study. Uh, moved down to item number seven, and we'll have to talk about balancing later, but um, changing, advancing the $250,000 for this study from 2018 to 2015, eliminating the project below it, Whitney Road realignment, based on our yellow and white discussion, renumber Gravit Creek to number eight, um, and as is it, did we decide to check into the scope or to go ahead and change the scope now and then get a new cost estimate for Bradley Creek? Ask you for clarification. Birch, I'm sorry. Birch, yeah. There's nothing right here. Yeah. I would change, I, I propose to change the scope now and then look for a new estimate. Okay. And why, is, why is Whitney Road Real Alignment coming out? Uh, it's okay. 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 You didn't see it. Yes, that's right. We did say that. We took a jello off. I'm with it. I'm with you now. So, um, and then the other change, if it's agreed to, your Birch Road Rehab, uh, include the pathway in the scope and then update the outer direction. Okay, and then that does her. What else do I have? You've got track listed. Okay, and eliminate the term track from the third line up in the bottom. Big catch. Okay, uh, so it's motion and seconded. Any further discussion? Any objection? Okay, um, and moving to table four, Mr. Lyon. 
So we had uh, <coughs> two grandfathered projects in there. Those are the bike plan, pet plan project implementation for the previous tip. And then we had uh, five new projects added in from the from the nominator projects. So um, you can see the numbers, etc. Not too much to uh, clarify there. I obviously need to take track out down below. Uh, and that. Maybe take out the word alternative out of the title? Yes, yes leave it as non-motorized. Yeah, that's straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like we have pretty good, robust, multi-year implementation of the recommendations from the bike plan and the pedestrian plan, which I believe mir mirrors the recommendations and nominations you got during the process. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, any other, okay, we are on table four. Any comments? Uh, yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Robert Shipley. I just wanted some clarification. Uh, on the, the overall uh, items on the floor. And with regard to you were explaining the uh, funding sources on the whiteboard earlier, mm -hmm. and you mentioned, uh, this is where I need the clarification, you mentioned that the non <coughs> funding was not firm or it was taking a reduction, and it, it sounded like that that was going to take a bigger percentage reduction than the highway portion on a percentage basis. Oh, it's, uh, for clear, the transportation, what we used to call track or transportation, Matt 21 changed the title to, uh, we always call it track, it was from transportation enhancements to alternatives. And uh, the point I was making here is that AMAS does not receive from DOT or from the state a separate allocation for TA. It hasn't been done yet, and and it may change if we get a new process in place. Um, and I understand it's been a while since I've looked at it, but the rules regarding the administration of those funds have significantly changed, making it extremely difficult for states and MPOs to be able to use it, to access it. And so, any so basically, what the non-motorized Table Four has is uh, a total of twelve percent of the what we're calling here our surface transportation <coughs> program and match as a total. Uh, so it's it's the there's no separate. It used to be that we would get a match received surface <coughs> transportation program funds, track funds, CMAC funds, and then all of those were smushed together into one big pot. And then AMATs would apply our policies and procedures and apply, with the exception of CMAC, we always added the state CMAC into. So we take transportation track monies, STP monies, add them together, and take 10% for CMAC plus whatever other allocation the state had, correct? That's, yep. That's in the policy. And so, um, so basically our pot is smaller. We don't have a separate allocation for transportation alternatives. And so AMS is continuing to take from its reduced pot the percentage. And so, Nice clear spot. I'm sorry. So, uh, bottom line is this: all the items on this chart of potential funding, or is it? These are these are the projects we that the staff is recommending we fund at uh, 12 percent of our total out of this amount. You know, it, it uh, over four years it averages to 12 percent. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, a comment, uh, Todd Logan again. Uh, I'd like to first thank the staff and others of uh, the uh, non-motorized allocation, particularly in uh, 15 and 16, is I think significantly improved from what has been some years in the past. And uh, I'm pleased to see that that seems to represent a, a priority for some of the non-motorized transportation needs that we're working on here in Anchorage. Um, I know there's a public comment period, and I will uh, save uh, many comments for that. To Appropriate. The only question I would ask you to consider an adjustment to the table uh, before it goes to the public comment is the two grandfather projects um, are each uh, funded uh, quite a bit of money in both 2015 and 16. That's bike plan and ped plan implementation. I hate to give the appearance of cannibalizing some of the ped plan to improve the bike plan, but I, but I will suggest to me a minor shift of some ped plan money to bike plan money in 15 and 16 for the following two reasons. 
Uh, first, um, if you'll recall, two years ago, this group recommended the allocation of 2.3 million for bike plan implementation and one for head plan. And recently, it's been decided that all those monies will be spent on detailed design. Um, in hindsight, we're looking at this considerable amount of money in the future. That's probably going to be money well spent. But I would say that it looks like we're going to have two and a half times the number of bike plan projects planned than we are PED plan. And for that reason, I, I guess I would like to see a shift of some of the actual construction dollars in 15 to 16 to be slightly higher for the bike plan since they'll be shovel ready projects ready to go. The other reason I guess I would urge a slight shifting of some additional money to bike plan is because the bike plan work being done, striping and signing the core bike network, is considered the low hanging fruit in the bike plan. It's a huge miles per dollar because basically we're signing and striping existing pavement. In the case of the PED plan, it's almost all building new sidewalks and things. Not that those aren't important, but those are high dollar items for relatively small amounts of work to be done. Off the top of my head, the numbers that I would propose you consider is shifting 150,000 from bike plan, from PED plan to bike plan in 15. That would make those totals 800 and 500. And then 16 shift 500,000 from PED plan to bike plan, make those new totals 1.5 million and 500,000. I think it would better reflect the planning and design dollars already spent that are ready to be utilized in 15 and 16. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, it's my understanding, I'm looking at Tim James, that the, uh, I understand there's now a consultant on board who's going to be doing the work for both the state owned and the, the city owned routes. Um, and the reason that there is so much money and it's split pretty evenly between here is because both of them, is it only the, did it only go off the bike or does it include that? Just both. It's both. I can fit. I can fit. Um, and so I right now this is just from um, the intent is to implement the designs that are underway um, that I have been negotiated and in, in, are being negotiated between DOT and the, the city and, and the consultants. And so I, I if the reality is, is that we have more bike projects that are ready to go in advance of had projects, the reality is that they would. Um, so I don't know if, um, I don't know what shifting money would do to the project development. Jim, do you have any? It wouldn't affect the project development. Project development, we're going to put together as many shovel ready plans as the funding will cover. That's what's currently underway. So, so regardless of whether it's pedestrian or bicycle. And that was based on the allocations of the original bike and ped from 14 that had been allocated. So that's, they're going to advance through to the shovel ready point for as many of them as they could finance. Regardless and of whether it's either one. Okay. So changing if there was a, a redistribution between by the number of items. And then it's, once you, they're shovel ready, it's a matter of how many of them get out the door based on what the allocation is. So actually shifting from ped to bike or bike to ped simply changes the distribution a little bit of what what that's sitting there shovel ready in 15 or 16, which ones go out the door. And I think it's probably going to be more a matter of balancing because when you start picking projects off the two lists, it's, you know, if the next project is $150,000 and that suddenly skews the numbers by the difference or $300,000, depending on what it is, I think we're going to end up having to do some adjustments then that's probably going to make this 150000 difference a watch. Done. Okay, for discussion on the committee, um, suggestion from Mr. Logan is to shift more money from pedestrian to bicycle plan implementation. Um, I believe that, that when these were originally considered is that they were equally ranked um, without a preference given one over the other. Is that everybody else's recollection? Mr. Lyon, is that yours? Or? That's, yeah, that's always been the way we've... But let me, uh, I mean, I, I think Mr. Logan may have a point, but um, let me check with, I, I'd like to be able to hear from the project team and, and from Jim. Um, you know, I think since they're both in together here, the kind of changes that we're thinking about, we could do through an admin mod because we're not really, it's just the timing in which we could do it. So um, I don't think we should change it right now. I think we should figure out a little bit more about the project delivery because I, I think Mr. Logan's trying to point out, we want to make sure that we're prepared for spending where the projects are going to be ready. I think Jim's got a point that 
we really can't tell. We're just gonna we're gonna do both. It's whichever is one shovel ready, and if it's a if it's a pedestrian project or a bike lane striping, that's the one we're gonna advance. And so I think we should keep them now, and then before we approve, we should figure out which one we're gonna be ready to do and which one we're gonna be ready to deliver, and then we go from there. I don't disagree with Mr. Logan. I mean, I think he's I think his logic is good. Let's just make sure based on the project team that's what that's on track. So I recommend no change right now. Okay, what's the will of the, any other comments on table four from the audience? Okay, back to the committee, what's the desire here? Move to approve table four as it is. The edits like the title. Getting rid of transportation alternative and track. So, a motion by Heil, second by Linda Moon. And any objection? <coughs> so good. Now, is this one of the, this isn't one that you said was not, is this one of the, table five, this is one that was changed, right? Yes. Okay, this is the one I think is, um, it's more confusing because of the way the percentages are calculated. Um, whether you calculate it with 1.2 million in additional CMAC funds, whether or not this 70% includes it. And so it's, it, it seems a little bit uh, high. I think if you take out the 1.2 million, it's about 13%. But you wanna go ahead and walk us through it, and um, and I think as putting my gavel aside, that I think we really ought to take a look and see if we can balance this closer to 10%, uh, given the changes in our air quality status and in the, um, how should I be diplomatic? To be able to justify it to our policy committee. The other thing is, is that the 1.2, which is called pure CMAC money, can only be spent on emission reduction projects or the and primary SIP mandated. This for the primary SIP mandated projects. So, so really, those those should become 1.2 million dollars, and, and they are. And that's why, because they were like that, that's how close we got it that way from. We're really close, you know, it's 1.12 and they gave us 1.2 to make sure it was covered. The, the state's trying hard to make sure the SIP mandated projects are covered in the local community. So the rest of the money then is the 10% should be, which is only, you only get 10% if that's what the um, right. policy procedures say, so it should be 10% because you only take it. Unless you're trying to get more, it would help to maybe have a hard line here between the SIP mandated stuff and keep those married to the 1.2 million dollars, adjust the dollars so that they reflect 1.2. The other thing I would point out is that air quality wise, um, Anchorage is trying desperately to stay out of being a non attainment area for PM10, which it does. We have exceeded several times this year already, and that because the money that we are taking is a 10% above and beyond, I mean above, and it's not the pure CMAC. That's, we may call it CMAC, but it's not really CMAC in the sense that I don't think it's going to have the same type of, kind of restrictions on it as pure CMAC money does. So the programs for the, air, the arterial roadway dust control program is, is going to be a critical program to make sure that we don't go to our um, we were close to rain out and of, of mag chloride this past January when we were experiencing um, exceedances and everybody running around trying to find uh, dust pelletives and there was like, we don't have any money, we've run out of money because there's no CMAC. But I'm just pointing out that if we're using STP funds for this program, calling it CMAC, I don't think we have, a leg we have the limitations of a three year program and that. <coughs> shouldn't keep the limitations and we should make sure that we're not in non-attainment for people. So would you support the, so then you're saying keep that $200,000 in there oh, every yeah. year? Oh yeah, okay. every year. And, and, or, and make sure that's what they need so that we stay out of non-attainment. So we have the materials that we need to keep the dust down on those weird free spa moments when we're doing the entrainment, which is very specific. Dust is, very, this dust, uh, are very specific tied to traffic, which makes it extremely eligible. Okay. I'll get off my soap, air quality soap box. Let me balance the rest of the stuff. <laughs> I, think, I think Cindy and you have a really good point. I think that when we first created this, the format of this table, the way in which the money came to us 
was under different rules. So we created the format to match the rules, but the rules are different. Our conformity situation is different. So I think there are requirements on the SIP mandated ones, one and two, and as they continue to be SIP mandated, we would have to fund them whether we got any CMAC allocation or not. We That's would just correct. We would literally have to do right. it. They would be at the top of the pot. But when we, when we, since the feds have still created maintain that category called congestion mitigation air quality funds that has a whole bunch of different types of projects that are eligible, the kinds of projects that fall under a CMAC, they, all of these projects are still those kinds. Yes. It's just that with the CMAC allocation, as it were, we have to do one and two. So drawing a hard line, I think, as Jennifer suggested, and then making a note, you know, SIP measured funded projects. Um, then, directly out of the yeah. step. Yeah. And then the ones Keep below it, it yeah. the studies, programs, and projects. Are our 10%. Right, they, they are our 10% or our 10% target. They are projects like congestion mitigation and air quality. They're not expansion, they're not capacity, they're not necessarily safety. And then, but keep them, still continue to keep them Absolutely. separate. So I think we should work on the format and then work on the balance of the price. But I think um, and they're, they're gonna have to make some adjustments to when we present it. And the other thing is, is we're never guaranteed that the state's going to give us above and beyond on CMAC. Right. We are lucky that we got it, that they're going to give it to us. If you know, other non-attending areas pop up as primary, those will be able to get that. As Mr. Shipley pointed out, you know, we're, we're taking a piece of this, uh, based on a policy committee, at a slice of it for transportation or non-motorized. Mm -hmm. We're also tasting a slice of it or congestion mitigation air quality like projects, which is how the bottom half or the bottom two thirds of table five is funded. We're taking it out of this allocation and then the balance is for roads and pavement. So that's the direction that the policy committee has given us. And what we need to do is figure out a way before we adopt this thing is to make the studies, plans, programs, and projects closer to 10%. Yes, yeah. and then okay. I think if we showed it like you suggested it would be would be a much better idea. Okay. okay. Percentages that are, are there now also include monies for the SIP mandate. Yes, they do. So you have to recalculate the percentages yes. so you really knew what you were going for. Right? Yeah, and that's where some of the confusion is. And because if you were to draw a, t a hard line here and just consider the studies and plans, programs, and projects, these all together are closer to about 13%, not 17%. Yeah. 17% at the end of the 1.2 is very confusing. And yeah. And I don't know, it's confusing no matter how we show it. Yeah. And so it might make it a little bit clearer. Okay, um, if I may step back a little bit with the uh, committee, recognizing we're at five to four, we do have a guest speaker who would like to present some information. We do have um, several more tables to go through. Is there a belief that we can get through it? Is there a need perhaps to, um, Continue the meeting. Um, let's, see, let's try to get it done by. Well, keeping in mind that this is the last uh, of our tables that's part of our allocation. The okay. Other tables are not part of okay. HMAT's allocation. We don't have to figure out the percentages and all that stuff. Okay, so. but we do need it. The, I was a little concerned when you said that they weren't touched because I don't want to send something out to the public that hasn't been at least scrubbed by the agency responsible. Right. You have our I've looked, I've looked you scrub it? I looked at seven. I talked to Craig about it. Okay. I mean, it's going to need some finer tweaking, but you've made a significant change. And there's going to be a new SIP coming out, so it's table eight will change, but I think we can, James, if, if it's the desire of the committee to direct staff to where we're outside of our allocation, that we go ahead and, and do that if we can before yeah. the policy committee. So maybe that would be a standing recommendation you can make. Yeah. Okay, so with that, so this is the last table that affects our allocation. Oh. And then we have a couple of new tables at the end that we want to talk about. Okay, let's rock and roll and see if we get it closer to 10%. Um, recognizing that we lost $250,000 on table three in the last year. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Can I go back and recommend that that $250,000 we have in the table program for now? Going back to table three. Sorry, sorry, just to make it work, because I know how hard it is to make it balance, is to, we took out Whitney Road, project number eight, and we took out the $250,000 from 2018 and moved it into 2015. I, my recommendation 
because of the flexibility here is to move that 250000 down to or up to the payment replacement program help policy. So we're going to so move. Second. There you go. Move by Hyle, seconded by Hanson that we will have that 252 payment rate fire page. That this is just helpful. <coughs> um, did we approve Don Bogos? Yes, we did. Yeah, did. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had a very short answer. Sure did. Um, okay. And Craig and Jay. Call for a vote on the changes to three. Is that a motion and a second? Oh, is there no objections? Thank you. Okay, table five. We talked about putting a hard line in, making those two SIP projects correlate to the one point two million dollars in CMS funds. Huh? And do we have public comment on table five at this point? The congestion mitigation fund. Thanks. I'm running about three still. Can I just make a just sure. comment? We could do it now or public review. As far as meeting the 1.2 in projects one and two, I know that I can put another eighty thousand dollars to get to 1.2 into ride sharing and transit marketing. Very easy. We have not. You need to get some more advanced this I, I have no problem obligating it. So I mean, if we if, we, if that's what we want to do, we can. You want to make it 1.2. I don't know if any objection to the before we do that. Before we do that, do you need any, I don't know if you need any more resources on no, that. I don't think I don't think I'm that uh, public education for. <coughs> I think that was actually clipped along pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Um, back to the audience. CMAC. Table five. Any questions, comments? Uh, bringing it back to the committee. Uh, one point. So nine hundred. Um, Number one, now we're talking about the 10% for uh, about 3% over the four years that we need to, to uh, focus on where to direct staff to maybe use, which projects to use to help balance. And I think, Lance, the biggest one for flexibility, and unfortunately, is yours. Yeah. The transit fleet expansion, is it flexible? It, 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 it's transit fleet expansion offers. It is flexible. Um, I'd have to give Craig a number. I have, a, I have an immediate need for anchorized vehicles and uh, van pools. Um, and I can't remember the total estimate of the vehicles off the top of my head. I don't think it gets to 194. I just, I don't remember. Well, just keep in mind that the CMAC, I mean, the language in the policy procedures is 10% over average over the four years. Right. So you have a larger number in, in 2018 of, of 4 billion. You, right, you right have, now we're about 13 at, over the four But I'm just saying, you look, yeah, we're about 13 over four years. So you don't have to look at the 1940 in 2015 and say, we'll take some out of that and take some out of 16. You can look at the four million out there. Between the four of the, those four years, whatever dollar figure we need to come up with. So instead of trying to target each individual year, just right. target it <laughs> lower that year, and that'll make that go way down. And then when we lower that year, we'll just have to make sure that if, if that money so we would lower 2018 fleet expansion. To bring it closer to 10%. Because your 10% is basically 2.3 million, and you don't have any money in 2017. Yes. So you just have to make a balance so it's 10% over the four years. And right now, Craig, the way you understand it is that we are um, over-programmed by 1.4 million over the four years, and that you can balance it um, pretty close. Right. OK, so that's the second change that we have here. <coughs> Uh, further discussion from the committee. Just make one observation. My crew is already looking into the out years where we have to do another bus by, and it's around 18. In 18 and 19, I'm going to be 10 million dollars. So I was just kind of planning ahead to buy some buses. All righty. So we'll work that as we work. That's when we might need to take some more from the right. yeah. Because our place will be aged by then. I gotta replace well, eighteen. We gotta be about ten percent. Yeah. Get, get the waiver from the top. We've got a ways to work on it. There's a storm coming. Okay. If there's any further changes, move to approve table five track. with the in, with the uh, uh, um, amendments as discussed. Yes, second. 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 Moved by Howell. Seconded by Hanson. The changes being. Change item number one, increase it from the eight, 820 to 900,000 a year to fully utilize 
the restricted CMAC funds and draw a big line. Draw a big line and, and, and actually on table one make that break that out so it's separate and, and, and everything and I can work with you on it too. And then the other change is, is to use uh, project number one, transit transit fleet expansion and, and AT to help balance to bring that overall percentage closer to ten percent and um, uh, any further discussion? Oh, I get rid of the word track at the bottom. Good catch. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, any objection? Okay. <coughs> and so, um, the way I understand it, table six, six seven, eight. And nine are for, I'd like to talk about this again, um, are ones that the respective state and city staff will work on to make sure that they are as updated as possible. Staff, we have worked on table nine. Oh, you yeah. have. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. so we'll take a look at it. If there's anything else, and then we yeah. you guys do it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the main part of table seven is the railroad stuff. The railroad. Brian and I work together to do that with a split. Yeah. It's not going to be significantly different. It's going to look pretty much like this. I mean, it, it would be nice if we put out as good as possible so we're able to scrub it a little bit. And then I, uh, we have, we previously had a table 10 that has been updated, and then we've added another portion on it. And James, if you'd like to just uh, bring people's okay. attention to it. Can I just pick up? Uh -huh. I just wanted to mention to James, I'd like to sit down on, on that. Water bank and minimal facility improvements line on table eight. Okay. Re re rework those rework those numbers. Okay. okay. The first one. The first one doesn't have a number. Three one. <laughs> yeah. The one with the grandfather. Table eight. Okay. I'll be a grandfather. So Stephen. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fast. We can okay. probably do it before we ignore it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> okay, table 10. I do you want to just briefly walk over what we're showing here and how it relates to the other numbers in the We um, Table 10, previously there was just one table, and then uh, with a breakdown of projects that were included in the payment replacement program, uh, which was found in table 3. Um, this with this tip, we've added a second table to the program of payment replacement. Uh, and this table refers back to table six, uh, which is the um, course name slips my head here. Uh, oh, the, principal arterial pavement. Yeah, the National Highway System table, the Anchorage Area Principal Arterial Pavement Resurfacing and ADA Compliance uh, Project number. So there are a number of Again, uh, pavement replacement projects that could be considered for that particular line item in Table 6. And so what we did in Table 10 is just broke that out into specific individual projects. Um, so you can have it for easy viewing. And this gets to the question I think Craig, that, that had been raised. Like, hey, we have to focus on the work on these one R's. Why is it in our tip? It wasn't real clear. Right. Okay, any further comment from staff on the tip? The overall recommendation. Okay. Okay. The, this tip, as amended, the advance of the policy committee to be released for public comment. Second. Moved by Hal, seconded by the. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, any objections from? Okay, it's approved. And moved on. Great, nice job, James. Yeah, no, it's 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 a works. lot of stuff. Uh, Jamie Kennedy, Craig's going to hand out some maps. Um, last May, I came to the TAC and, and asked that by the end of the year, the new Kabata, Kabata and AMAT TAS data be made public so they could be compared. There's no lot of TAS data that's going to be public, as far as I understand. And AMATS chose to put the issue of making public updated demographic data into the, into the MT, updated MTP schedule. 
So for the second year in a row, AMATS, the Regional Metropolitan Planning Organization, has been missing in action in terms of the public or legislature having access to any information by the MPO. You could sort out the different demographics and different subgroups of AMATS and Kibata for traffic and toll revenue. AMATS has also been silent on keeping up with any budgetary impact of the traffic on crossing. I see 20 million a day in today's tip. But basically, revenues announced a new plan in which the 300 million would be put directly financed by the state uh, and for a proposed two lane bridge. And it counts on a th over $300 million TIFI alone that has been turned down five times. So that's at least, by Kabata's numbers, at least a three, or revenue numbers, a three to $600 million hit to the state transportation budget that could have a differential impact <coughs> on AMAT's resources. And of course, the new, the new revenue plan puts the a low ball cost of a two lane bridge at, at, in, in the budget. And it relies on the old discredit, LBA discredited CDM traffic control revenue study, that, that, that and they use the revenue numbers from four lanes, four lanes of revenue. So for over a, a year, there's been a but there has been an available traffic model that the Brigham's done for HDR for the Wasilla bypass. HDR updated the TAS zones from the 2010 census data and talked to the Department of Labor about the employment numbers. And he's basically created a new TAS map with a 2010 base year and extrapolated that and then done a regional traffic model. So, and, and HDR is modeled a 2035 population for Matsu of 172,000, which is consistent with the ICER and AMATS number. The old Kibata number was 200,000 plus. And, and the Kabata number put almost all the growth of the borough right in the, in the in, right by the bridge and hardly any on the Wasilla core. So recently, the Department of Labor, this is this week, this month's trends article, Neil Smith calculated, uh, well, the Department of Labor in, indicated a, a growth rate from the Matsu from the 2010 census to last July of 2.35% annually. You extract, extrapolate that growth straight line to 2035, and you get a population of, of 155,000 in the Matsu in 2035. So if anything, the HDR numbers may be high. But of these maps, if you look at them, you can see significant differences between what HDR did and the old Kabata old 2011 numbers for different TAS zones. Now, we don't have new TAS. Kabata numbers, but basically, I, I I did work that I think that I think that you guys should have made public before the discussion. I, I just have to say parenthetically, when I talk to legislators and assembly members, they want to know what's the difference. You know, why ten thousand jobs per Kabata in in the Point Mackenzie Taz zone, and bring them and ACR have twelve hundred, AMATS had twenty four hundred. But legislators and assembly members are having to get into planning details for great, very different scenarios. And it's not coming from this committee. It's not on your website. It's not public. We're having to create that. Uh, John Spring did a great uh, workshop. Uh, it was a working session on the differences that I wouldn't have figured out that there's 2.2 diamond centers in Point McKenzie in 2035 if he hadn't done that. But none of that is, is public. Uh, it's not a, it's not accessible, and, and I think that's an MPO responsibility. So um, also, um, so if you look at the differences, just in that in the two set, that Taz zone and Point McKenzie, uh, we've blown up, and I've chosen Taz zones with the boundaries of between the uh, HDR and Kabara who are terminus, or the one north of uh, the one north of Knick Village, where you know is there twelve thousand people. Uh, 12,500 people says HDR in that in that TAS zone or 19,000. That's going to make a big difference. And the biggie, and that's the map I just handed out, is will 36,000 vehicles a day cross the bridge in 2035? Well, you know, that's the old Kabata number that went through the LBNA audit. Or will there only be 9,400 uh, vehicles a day? And that's the number that, uh, and they modeled a toll. And they model a seven dollar and eighty cent toll, which is the Kabata number. You know, five dollars a vehicle a car, and you know, two point five cents a year, or percent a year, or you know, a, 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 a 
truck toll of $28. So <clears throat> that's a difference between those two project project projections right now of 26,600 trips a day. I mean, I've watched how you wrestle over 9,000, 10,000. I mean, just the daily difference in those two toll numbers is $250,000 a day in toll revenue in 2035. That's over $90 million a year. So th these, are, these are real differences that if you're, you know, in the fiscal constraint world, I think you've got to get hands on. I think you've got to put the data out there. Now, DOT has explained, in fact, I wouldn't have requested the data if I hadn't seen the DOT explanation, because they're saying that, that Brigham was doing micro, uh, you know, micro analysis, but he has to model a whole system to look at the numbers. And, and, and uh, Kabata has done macro uh, uh, modeling. But I, I think that's a distinction without a difference. They're both taking PAS data, they're both putting numbers of population and jobs and households in each zone, they're both then modeling that on different, uh, on, on different traffic numbers and coming up with very different scenarios. So, and, and of course, it, it makes no sense for anyone to be spending money modeling no tolls. HDR did that too. But no one is proposing any plan for the Connect Arm Bridge that's no toll. You, you know, to tolls affect demand, obviously. If, you, if you're modeling no tolls, as AMATS has done, and putting that out there, you, you're putting out an assumption that people are not going to uh, take seriously. The last, uh, the last model that was done not by Kabata was, and the, was the HD Highway to Highway Project No. 9 when they took ICER data and CH2M model it and they got a number of, of uh, 17,700. So you go from 36,000 last Kabata number, 17,000 was Highway to Highway. Now, now HDR when they model it until it's at 9,400. So, uh, Another assumption you might think about when, as you update the, the DOT is uh, the DOT is now using a model where Alaska's real income is rising at 1.6% a year. Now, Neil Fried has a, an article in this month's uh, Department of Labor Trends magazine, and he basically calculated that we've been rising in the 10 years to end of 2012, the, the rate of increase has been. 12% over 10 years, about 1% a year cumulatively. So we should be so lucky to go up 1.6%. We'll be lucky to, you know, I think, keep going up 1% if you look at the pipeline. But I think if you do your traffic modeling on a, on a even, if it come, even if it comes out from USDOT on a 1.6 real income, that basically, you're going to have an unrealistic assumption in there because that when you accumulate 1.6 a year to 2035, that's like saying a dollar's worth 63 cents, inflation corrected. So you, you, and that, of course, will really greatly increase the, the willingness of people to pay a toll if they're that much richer. It's not going to happen, I don't think. So I hope by the end of this year, if not sooner, Amos will do your job as an MPO and coordinate regional demographic and traffic forecasts. I think that's, that's your job. And, you, and to make that information public. Not that, the, I mean, I don't, I, I care less whether you like the bridge or don't like the bridge, but I think your job is to put the numbers out there so people, so, le so legislators, assembly people, policymakers can see, you know, what's the differences between those assumptions. If you can't coordinate the agencies to have one consistent set of assumptions, you at least should publish the difference. So I'm basically, <laughs> I'm doing this this work, but I don't think I should be. So, um, you know, I hope that new demographic data is available soon. I don't know when it's going to be when it's be public, but the Legis Senate Finance Committee will probably deal with this in the next few weeks, and you guys have nothing to say, and I don't think that's how it works. Uh, any, any questions for me? Uh, I know I'm the skunk at the picnic. Uh, actually, um, I, I do have uh, comments, not as a TAC member, but as a representative of DOT. Um, it, it, in a different capacity as the one who also shared with you directly the information that you are now sharing with the Technical Advisory Committee. And what you did not provide, except for in a very broad way, were all of the caveats and the qualifications, and that in no way is DOT um, in stating that 9,400 vehicles in 2035 is the number for the bridge. 
what we did do was we want we modeled using one methodology of, of time of, of the value of time to see what difference it would make way up here in the city of Wasilla. What we really needed to see was was with without a toll are we going to have substantially different needs uh, through Wasilla? And we found out no, and so we ran. And, and so it is. It is. It was done for sensitivity. Yes, there is sensitivity there, and yet it doesn't. It it, it uh, basically is a well over capacity in the city of Wasilla, no matter what. And so I do. I just want to say for the record that this um, that I believe professionally it's in, it's um, inappropriate to be using data that was provided to you without. Um, listing the caveats, it, it was for this very reason that we provided all of those those explanations about what this, how this this model uh, was developed and how it's being used. And so I will, uh, and I don't, I, I just want to say that for the record that I, I, I think it's inappropriate because it is not a position that DOT or anybody else has taken that this is a hard number for the bridge. We said that the numbers for the bridge are best left to sub area and project level analyses and that and we were very specific and, and careful about that because this is is not what the purpose of the original model was and it was it was never intended to be a predictive model for um, for the bridge and so I I want to say that as, as a technical committee person and and as a DOT person Ms. Whitney, two comments one is I, I thought I was clear in describing this as an HDR product when they modeled a toll. Let it me, was not, it is not an HDR product. DOT paid for it with, with, with state funds, and it is a product that, is being that has been adopted and accepted by the Matsu Bureau. So if HDR doesn't own this model, it is work that HDR did on behalf of DOT. And so I don't think it's, I, I don't even think well, that's I have, a problem. Let me have a second comment. Jennifer, I have a and it, but, actually, but, I, I don't need to be but, this but, here, but, uh. but all the other models they did in looking at the Wasilla bottle modeled no toll. The, your, your, uh, your MTP modeled no toll. That's not a realistic assumption on, under any one scenario. So if there's no information out there about what traffic has been modeled on the bridge with a toll, then I'm going to look for whatever information that exists, and this is it, and that should not be true. We should, AMATS should have modeled the toll when you did the MTP. You knew that was an unrealistic assumption. I think that's why it, the DOT and AMATS would sort of be together on a higher number. And I think you should be modeling toll now. And I, I think you, uh, the, the assumptions, you sent me the information, the assumptions are, are stated right there, but I think um, AMATS is not in this ball game of putting out demographic data so people can judge these wildly different scenarios. And if you show me any other model for the bridge that's been done in the last three years with a toll, uh, I will cite that too, whether it's a high number or a low number. Uh, Mr. So, so Jamie, did you um, did you create the maps yourselves, or did you um, just bring no. some different layers together? I, I did a public records act request, yeah. uh, and uh, Doug Tosa uh, at ACE uh, did maps for me. So I took the TAS data that's out there, yeah. and, the, and the TAS data comes from from you. I got it from AMAPS. Yeah. And the HDR data, I got it through a public rec records act request. And uh, the, uh, the the Kabata data is uh, from the last time they released data, which was in 2011. Okay. So this is all. None of the numbers are mine. Uh, I, outside the numbers, I think there's some good news. In there. If you look at the Kabata and the AMAS TAZs, pretty much we're using the same boundaries. Uh, there's some split numbers, yeah, and they're somewhat different. The but yeah. I mean, but on but on general. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they're using a different size or different scale TAZ. So the good news is we're looking at the same area. The difference is, is how we calculate the trips or everything within the area. And then the other comment would be it might make the map simpler, but it took me a while to figure out what the red numbers were on the map. And I realized they're literally the same number as the HDR TAZ. So if you're going to share it, it might just make it cleaner if you just make the, make the red, make, um, HDR then, so that 
so that this is simple because I was trying to figure out what's the difference in the two um, for, for uh, illustration. Yeah. And, I, and if you have some notes, you know, based on the comments, and you'd be willing to share them with the group, it'd be good for us to have those uh, out of the record. And yeah. I also think that just building on that too, using it as HDR, it's not HDR's numbers. These are numbers that were developed in HDR's capacity working for the state of Alaska Department of Transportation. You tell me how to describe that. I want to use your words because I don't want to miss it. But I know that this is the only, that unless there's further information coming out, and there's the, my public records, I don't have complete yet. But this is the only time they modeled toll for the bridge in any numbers that they have made public to me. So, uh, yeah, the only numbers you, there are. Right. Okay. But when you have such wildly different numbers that will lead to such wildly different financial scenarios, you can see that it's important that AMATs um, put their hands on this data and start putting those assumptions out there. And information. So, Jamie, I just have a couple quick comments. Um, you know, I think making sure that there's consistency between the model assumptions that AMATS uses and Kinnikarm uses, or even at the MATSU at a regional level, it's one of the reasons that we in the policy committee approved a, a, a policy that basically said when we advance this next MTP, we're all using the same sheet of music. So we're all agreeing to use the same sheet of music. It, not that we weren't before, but it make it clear. So that, that's just that's one, super own one comment. The other comment is, if memory serves me, when we did when we did the modeling for the roadway network for capacity, we assumed, and, and we can go back and, and check this, but we assumed the most amount of traffic on the bridge possible for two reasons. We wanted to, we wanted to assume the, the case in which we put most traffic on the Anchorage network and, and and, it, what and, there's, would and what year would happen? So we used we used kind of, and I'll say worst case scenario as it were, only for the purposes of providing the most amount of cars that could get flooded onto the Anchorage Street network based on the largest possible capacity of Kinnick Arm over a scheduled time. So we did that. Now, when we did our financial plan, we used we used the toll revenue that we got from Kinnick Arm. So if, in your analysis, you're suggesting that they're using a, 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 a totally unrealistically high numbers. Yeah, so what we did is we, we, took, we took the worst case scenario for the traffic and sort of the best case scenario for the financials, assuming. Because it, no matter what the outcome was, we would know we would have enough capacity. If the bridge was built to four lanes right off the bat, we have planned for the worst case on our network. From the financing side, um, we didn't assume no toll. We assumed some revenue coming in based on the information we got from finance. So, I mean, we can go back and look at that, but, um, and, and then this is my last comment. I completely agree with you that the assumptions ought to be available. And I mean, I know we're trying to, to make that information so that we and the folks like you and anybody, Gavada, policy committee member can answer the questions about the difference between the two. So, I mean, I think I think we're getting better at it. I know that our planning staff and um, here locally and the planning staff at the Matsu Bureau have been working on, you know, regional assumptions and planning assumptions. So that stuff is, uh, is happening as well. So, I mean, I, I think there's, I'm not saying it's perfect and I not necessarily disagree with everything that you have, but I also think that you might be misrepresenting some of it. So anyway, that's just, I'll make two quick comments and I'll be quiet. One is you just approved uh, 200 million in the TAS for the Connect Arm Crossing, but you have a signed agreement with uh, Kabata, as you as well you Scott Goldsmith myself, to make to make to make available TAS data and the updated demographic data. With other projects, you need to see backup. Why is there an exception here? You've just approved 200 million in the out years for Kabata. We should have TAS data by now because the financial assumptions are so hugely different. And, and, as, and as you say, um, the plans have got to be consistent. So when the numbers are so huge, and my number from the bridge has dropped from like 2.6 to 2, 2 billion, through state direct state financing, but they won't release their backup 
paper. Uh, those numbers are so, too, so huge in terms of fiscal constraints and what you're struggling with here that you have to get in this game. Yeah, and I think when we when we approved the plan at the time we approved the plan, it was the best information because I've also heard conversations that, you know, frankly, there are some people who believe they need people in legislature who they don't care for the toll. Pay the whole thing and no toll. Well, that was going to be my comment. If you just took out the financial, I mean, and you just looked at the, the numbers, that uh, the traffic numbers at the worst case scenario, what would be your argument with those numbers? What would be the argument of, of which you took out the model? financial portion and you just used the numbers that were calculated in for the worst case scenario on the in infrastructure within? Well, my, my, yeah. when, when the, the shortfall in tolls would be even more than your state money well, from AMAX. That's, that's, uh, uh, that's, on, on that's a, obvious. That, you know, so it would wipe out. With, you know, so are you, are you from? disputing the traffic numbers? You're t disputing the model? I mean, are you disputing the financial? Are you disputing both? I'm, 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 I'm saying that ICER did better TAS data and better modeling in the Highway Highway Project than Nevada has done. That the differences are huge. It'll make a huge difference whether a thousand people work at Point McKenzie or ten thousand people. It'll make a huge difference in terms of traffic downtown. It'll make an, you know a huge uh, ninety million a year. I mean, those are real numbers. I was just so I, I think you've done the right work on TAS. It's just that you haven't gotten consistency with Kabata, and this 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 differences on demographic TAS data, and this differences on traffic modeling are not public, they're not available. People, politicians don't understand them. So people are coming at them in meetings to try to make a planning reasonable decision. And you're not there saying with any comment on that. Well, I appreciate your comments. Right, and, and just for clarification too, this body has a lot of Once they have that information available to, and the agreement is between the municipality and Kabata that that information will be shared. And it's not yet available. Thanks for the committee's comment. Thank you. Yeah. We are at 4.30. Any, uh, any other announcements? Can I make one quick comment? Okay. As I mentioned earlier, we have about five consultant contracts to go out, and we have uh, the assembly on Tuesday approved our first one, which is the household travel survey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the uh, RSG Incorporated stuff <laughs> there, um, there were unbelievable amounts of it. Uh, hoops and barrels and burning things in the way that the well, Jamie and Teresa, I don't know how they did it. But it was there. I, I, hold on, thanks, yes. Beard. It, it wasn't, it was so beard. One down, four more to go. Hey, congratulations. Okay, uh, policy committee is coming up on March 27th. The next TAC is April 10th. And that was position of what? Yeah, that would be really great. Because yeah. um, we're going to do a finale of the borough. So there's a. <laughs> 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 